Hello, Southside. Welcome to Testimony Tuesday. We're so excited that you tuned in to, uh, to catch our testimony today, which is going to be from Janine Gilbert. And so we're really excited to hear uh, what she has to share about how she came to Jesus. But Janine, you are a uh, longtime member of Southside. I would consider you a longtime member of Southside. Probably some of the people who came back, you know, in the early 2000s would see you as a newbie. But to me, mm -hmm. you are a longtime member. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, part of the furniture. Um, <laughs> and so Janine, you were a resident of uh, beautiful Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, and uh, mm -hmm. started coming to our church through some friendships that you had, which some of you in the way back machine uh, remember uh, Mike Guzman, who was kind of your connection that brought you to Southside. And so we're thankful to Mike for that. Um, and then uh, Janine, you run our Instagram page, which you do a really awesome job of keeping us up to date on the gram. And then uh, you're a small group leader of a really awesome small group with your husband, Ben, and you're just involved with so much stuff at Southside. Any yeah. other big things that I missed or? Um, well, I take all the photography at church oh, yeah. and VBS. And so that's something that combines like a passion I really like to do and serving God. So totally. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. And then uh, your mom to two awesome and adorable little girls, uh, Aspen and Magnolia, who are also yeah. treasured members of our church. And, uh, and then just to, uh, one thing that I love about Janine is how you're always thinking of how to bring into our fellowship those people on the margins of our community. Um, you're mm -hmm. always thinking about ways to demonstrate how Jesus loves them and is for them and ways to bring them into the fold. And so yeah. you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it, that seems no. to be something that you that you have a passion for and something yeah. that I think is really cool. So, all right, well, let's jump in then, Janine, um, and just start, tell us how you first became a Christian. Well, I think that sometimes I became a Christian through osmosis. Like I grew up in a Christian home and I always went to Sunday school learning about how Jesus loved me. But I think that I really made my faith my own after my senior year of high school. I took a gap year between going to college and that's when I really just discovered my need for Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's the time I would pinpoint when I became a Christian. Interesting. Yeah. So, so you said you discovered a need for Jesus. And so mm -hmm. can you tell us a little bit about what that um, need was like with that, how you uh, started mm -hmm. to be aware of a need for something greater. Yeah, absolutely. So I think that I was always just thinking that maybe my faith in Jesus was based on my parents' faith or that our friends. And um, after high school, one of my friends asked me, I know that you're a Christian, but why are you a Christian? And it just stopped me in my tracks. And I just thought, I don't know why I am. I just know that I am. And that just really kind of got me thinking and got me thinking about um, the verse I'd heard a thousand times in Peter about giving a reason for the hope that lies within you. And I couldn't give that reason. I just, I didn't know what that meant to me. And that's one of the reasons why I applied at Moody is because I just wanted to deepen my faith and I wanted to know just who God was, who is this person who says he's my savior and loves me. And I just wanted to learn more about him. Wow, that's really interesting. I love that uh, that a friend was able to have that influence to ask such a piercing question. Yeah. You know, I always I always think you know I wish I hope that in moments where I'm called upon by God to express some kind of question and some kind of mm -hmm. encouragement like that that I have the courage to be obedient like that. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Um, so what was your life like? Like, how has your life changed because you've kind of come to the sense of your need for Jesus and, and, um, and sort of found the, the ultimate solution to that need in Jesus? Yeah, <clears throat> I would say that um, prior to my realization of my need for Jesus, I definitely relied on my own um, self-righteousness and pride, which I did not know that that was it beforehand. Uh, what it looked like in my life was striving for perfection. I always, whether it's with my grades or my relationships with friends and family, I always tried to be the best. And 
um, I think that pride really stopped me from giving my all over to Jesus because it meant that I needed someone else besides myself. And I didn't want to make that connection. I'm very stubborn. And I just thought that I could do it all. Like I could get to heaven based on how good I was and realizing that that's not the gift of grace or salvation because if I had to earn it, it wouldn't be a gift. Right. And so I think now being a follower of Jesus is just accepting those free gifts that God has given me and just really every day surrendering my life to God and just saying like, this life isn't mine. This is yours. Use me. It's not about my perfection or what I show the world. It's about how you're seen through me, God. Wow. Yeah. And I think that's, that's such an interesting thing because I think that's so common. And I've even had that in my life is, you know, it's, it's a great thing to have that foundation to be raised yeah. a Christian and to have parents who are Christians. But there always comes that moment because I think that we're so naturally predisposed to self-righteousness and to try to turn the gift of grace into something that we, we trade right. God for with our obedience and our good deeds. Um, so that's so interesting because I've had that same thing in my own life and so many others that uh, it's interesting you bring that up. So And that's the American way, you know, like you fight for it, you do it. And that's just very countercultural to what Jesus says. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so here's a here's kind of a, this might be a tough question, but how do you find that Jesus is sort of the answer to maybe what you were looking for in self-righteousness and trying to, to be the best and be good and to show your worth? How do you find that Jesus, when you really understand who he is and really understand the gift of grace, how do you find that as the answer to the thing that you were trying to fulfill before? Mm. Yeah. Well, I'll say that it's a daily journey that I don't have that answer all the time, but, um, wow. I think that I would just say that I have found perfection, but it's not in me. It's in Jesus. Yeah. And that's something that can't, it doesn't change. And his gift of grace and love, no matter how perfect I am or how many times I feel his love and grace doesn't change. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I can always count on, which is so reassuring that even in my failures, I can still have that, that relationship with Jesus. Wow. Yeah, no, that's really cool. I think that um, I really like what you said there because I think it's so true that sometimes it's the like most horrifying thing in the world for someone who has built their identity on self-righteousness and trying to be, to be the best person that they can be to then yeah. let that go and receive something instead. Um, and yet on the other side of it, when you're actually able to lay that down and see that it is, uh, it tur goes from being something that's horrifying and scary and totally, you know, counterintuitive to a person to being something that's just so powerful and restful. Yeah. And I think that that leads to such a, um, I mean, for me, that's one of the great, Great. one of the best things in the good news of the gospel is that yeah. you don't have to try anymore. You know, you just receive from Jesus and then he leads you forward in his spirit to be the person that you wanted to be before, but that you never could yeah. be. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I think that's where I find rest is that I'm not striving every day to be this perfect image of who others say, or um, like the perfect mom or the perfect wife and just having rest and knowing that Jesus is perfect in me and that's enough. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I think rest is an underrated uh, Christian virtue and, and yeah. yet it's, it's central to who we are. <clears throat> yeah. um, so how, so we've talked, I mean, this is kind of, this is kind of obvious in some ways because it's been most of what we're talking about anyway. But just to really bring it down to brass tacks, how do you think your story could encourage someone else who's watching this and tuning in for testimony? Yeah. Well, I will say that I used to think that my testimony was really boring, <laughs> that I never wanted to tell people because I just thought I didn't have this crazy life transformation. I wasn't, you know, in prison or on drugs or homeless. Like I didn't have a radical change but then I realized that life change happens in your heart first mm -hmm. and sometimes that's the hardest thing to change is your heart yeah. 
And I think like you were saying before, a lot of Americans deal with this pride and self-righteousness. And I think that that can connect more on a personal level than these also amazing stories of transformation, but could be harder to relate to. I think that, yeah, just people will find that, oh, I didn't know that that was a struggle that I'm dealing with, or that self-righteousness and pride is something that God speaks against in the Bible. And so hopefully it will encourage people to look at their life and to say like, God has changed me. And it is important no matter how boring it might sound to some like that life change is just as important sure yeah and i think that uh interesting thing is that the, everyone's testimony is boring to themselves usually yeah. some people have crazy ones that they probably enjoy telling but most of us are like well it's not that interesting but sure i'll tell you and yet you never know yeah. who's gonna bless with the story that you have and so yeah. um, my prayer is for people listening to this that they'd understand the the gift of rest in God to find a solution from the striving and self-righteousness and just to find that peace with God through Jesus that comes only by faith and not at all by works or by deeds. Right. So, awesome. Well, let's go and do our lightning round now. So I'm going to uh, go through this and just have some, some kind of fun and more lighthearted questions um, that uh, just uh, the first thing that pops into your mind when I bring these up. So, here we go. Um, so first one, which is kind of a fun one, a, a preacher, a book, or a song that has encouraged you recently? Um, a song for sure. I love music so much. And I would say my new song that I've really been having on repeat is The Blessing by Carrie Job oh, and yeah. Elevation Worship. That has, yeah. and we sang it last week for or a week ago to, uh, for worship Wednesday. And I'm just really, really encouraged by the straight from scripture. Totally. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a new one to our church and it's a really, really good song. And I think a lot of people are, are getting into it. Maybe it'll be our, our COVID anthem. For there you go. Yeah. <laughs> um, here's a good one. Um, a place that you've never been to, but that you have always wanted to. Hmm. I have a long bucket list, but, uh, I would probably say Iceland, just the pictures that I see there are so beautiful. So I would love to go on some backpacking trip with Ben and just go there and see the hot springs. And wow. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a good answer. And that's a, (laughs) it's a good place to be right now too. So yeah. (laughs) Uh, let's see. How about, um, a favorite food to cook? Not necessarily to eat, but to cook. Mm. To cook probably anything my kids would eat. Yeah. (laughs) That's my favorite thing to cook. That's a good Um, parent answer. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But, uh, we just made homemade pizza the other night and that was really fun. I enjoyed doing that with the kids too. So for right now, I'll say that. Nice. That's great. And then uh, one more, um, a, a tip that you have for coping with the quarantine. And, you know, I know probably everybody is like, I need everyone else's tips, but what tip mm-hmm. do you have? <laughs> I would say, wow, I don't know. I'm trying to think if I want to make it like spiritual or like fun and lighthearted, but <laughs> for a spiritual tip, I would say just start each day in scripture. That totally changes my mindset. Um, And then for the rest, I would just say, um, like, find a funny show to watch. I feel like I watched a couple crime dramas in the beginning, and I felt, like, really (laughs) depressed. Just like, this is so sad. And then I'm like, I just need to watch something funny. So I put on The Office, and I just laughed. And it, I don't know, just kind of lifted the mood and made it a lot better. Nice. So I, I like it. So scripture and humor will get us through this. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I love it. I love it. That's awesome. Well, Janine, thanks so much for doing this. Um, I think that we had a really great, uh, you have an amazing testimony, and a really great Thank thing you. to share with so many people. And uh, just really appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And guys, thanks for tuning in to Testimony Tuesday. We will see you next week with another great testimony. In the meantime, keep calm, carry on, and uh, keep walking with the Lord. We love you. We'll talk to you soon.